Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. Six years ago, the world was enchanted by the adventures of Anna and Elsa as they dealt with a snowy blizzard that swept over Arendelle. And now they're back in the latest animated musical from the talented folks at Disney Animation. How does the sequel fare? This is Frozen 2. I liked the first Frozen a lot and found it to be an imaginative film very much in the Disney musical tradition. I was particularly impressed by how Elsa was written and how the relationship between the sisters was developed. In Frozen 2, directors Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee have continued to evolve Anne and Elsa and have them dealing with new problems. The movie is set a few years after the first film and we definitely get a sense of how they've matured. Something interesting about their dynamic here is that Elsa has questions about the past while Anne is concerned about the future of Arendelle. The film does a good job of showing how they attempt to cope with this. I was especially struck by Anna's arc and where they take her in this chapter. The character animation for Anna was also fantastic, properly conveying the different emotions she's going through. For the songs, I think Robert and Chris and Anson Lopez were aware they cannot repeat what Frozen did, so they do experiment with the musical styles. Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell's vocal cords are given a real workout with what they're required to do. Although what surprised me is that my favorite song belonged to Kristoff. He sings this 80s style rock ballad, which is able to be funny and also show what he's going through. Olaf is in the sequel too, and the filmmakers know how to utilize him, and I got a decent amount of laughs from his antics. The first movie was already visually impressive, and Frozen 2 has everyone upping their game, especially the effects department. There are really stunning images scattered throughout the film. I do think the first movie is narratively tighter, but Frozen 2 nonetheless presents plenty of pleasures through its runtime, and marks another winner from the artist at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Next up, the beloved children's show host, Mr. Rogers, meets a journalist who's unsure if he's the real deal in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. When you hear of a Mr. Rogers movie being made, you might expect it to be more of a traditional biopic, looking at his life and how he put his television show together. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood takes a completely different approach, though, and one that I thought worked quite well. Rather than being about specifically Mr. Rogers, the film instead focuses on a journalist named Lloyd Vogel, who is cynical and suspicious about everyone and everything. The movie does a good job of showing why he feels this way and the ultimate effect that meeting Fred Rogers has on him. By making Lloyd the protagonist, the movie is able to explore the whole idea of how kindness is something that can occasionally be hard to achieve, but it's not impossible either. The question comes from how we deal with the anger that is inside of all of us. The best scenes in A Beautiful Day do come from his meetings with Mr. Rogers, and the film captures how Rogers seemed genuinely interested in everyone he encountered. When I first saw Tom Hanks in the role, I admit I mostly just saw Tom Hanks standing there and doing a Mr. Rogers impression. But then a funny thing happened. As the movie played on, I more and more started to buy into him being Mr. Rogers and I found myself genuinely interested in the nuggets of knowledge he dropped. I also like seeing the scenes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood being filmed, and I have to shout out production designer Jade Healy, who did a great job of recreating the set. Overall, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is a very sweet movie that is able to properly convey Mr. Rogers' ideas and philosophies. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.